All right, here we go. So we're going to go over this one more time. It's the second time we've done this. But for some of you guys, you need it. Now look, do not expect me to do this every test. There's no way. Okay, we'll never get through this book. We're not going to get through the whole book anyway. It's not even my objective. But we're not going to get to where I want us to be um, if I keep doing this. But I don't know. I got the holiday spirit, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I did. All right, so let's go through this, and um, let's, let's not make this a waste of time, because I am doing you a huge favor by doing this again. Couldn't find what? Football pictures. Uh, not all the games are on there yet. I haven't edited them all. I only have, I only have like two. Oh, do you run the Red Lion Pictures Club? That's not even on the. That's not even on the Red Lion. It's on the Red Lion Media Arts Flickr page. It's not my. It's not my personal Flickr page. Somebody knows how to get on there in here. Okay, almost every person who plays sports knows how to get to it. So, all right, let's do this. So it says, identify each as, here's your choices. I even give you choices, okay, which is nice. I put them up there. So, I mean, you could just guess and, and get it right, possibly, all right? So their corresponding is one choice. Alternate interior is another one. Alternate exterior and consecutive interior. And is there one more? Yeah, that's it. All right, so those are your choices uh, for these particular angles. So let's take a look, three and six. So if I... Now, when I mark these, this doesn't necessarily mean they're equal to each other because we don't know that these are parallel. I'm just going to mark them so you can just see which angle we're talking about. So three and six. If you have two lines cut by a transversal, what are three and six? Are they corresponding? Are they alternate interior? Alternate exterior, consecutive interior. John, which one are they? They're alternate interior because they're in between the two lines. That means they're interior. So there's no way they're going to be exterior. Everybody got that? Because they're in between the two lines. And they're alternate, which means one is up here at the top left and one is down here at the bottom right. They're completely opposite, but they're inside, in between these two lines right here. Everybody see that? All right, so they're alternate interior angles. All right, let's take a look at the other one. Four and eight, let's take a look. I'm just gonna mark these. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean they're equal to each other. I'm just marking them so you can see the angles. All right, so four and eight. I'll tell you this, I'm not going to repeat, like some people put alternate interior for one and they put alternate interior for another. I'm not going to repeat them, all right? Now, there's four choices, only three questions, so one's not going to be in here. Everybody got that? All right, but I'm not going to repeat. So if you already used one, don't use it again. But who knows, you might have used it and got it wrong the first one, and then if you use it again, maybe you get it right. I don't know. So what do we think? Look, do you see this clump of four angles up here? in this clump of four angles down here, which the four and the eight are both on the bottom right. Do you see it? They're both basically in the same spot. So what does that mean? Which one of these words mean they're in the same place, basically? Nathan, say it. Corresponding, right. They correspond to each other, okay? They're in the same place. They correspond to each other, all right? So four and eight are corresponding angles. Now, most of you guys took the retake and you saw that the picture looked a little different. I think the line went this way. Again, it was over a week ago since you took it, so I don't know if you remember much of it at all. But um, I did change a little bit up. I m might have even changed, like, I might have put, like, one down here and mixed up the numbers or something, okay? But as long as you know that four and eight are in the same place, bottom right, bottom right, they're corresponding. Now, there's other corresponding angles, like one and what else? One and... What else would be corresponding to one? Five, that's right. One and five would be corresponding to each other because one and five are on the top left of this group and five is on the top left of this group. Everybody got that for corresponding? All right. Three and five, let's take a look at that. Three and five. Now, they're interior, aren't they? Okay, but are they alternate interior? Are they complete opposites? No. Okay, so what do we call them? One's right next to the other one. So we call that what? Consecutive interior angles, all right? So these are consecutive interior angles because they're in between, they're interior just like that first one was, the alternate interior. So they're in between the two lines 
but they're consecutive, which means one after another. You got it? What are, what are, uh, there's only two other consecutive or one pair of consecutive interior angles. Uh, I, I should say it like this. One other pair of consecutive interior angles. What would that be? So three and five and what else? Four and six, that's right. Four and six would be consecutive interior angles. What about three and four? They're right next to each other, aren't they? But to be consecutive interior angles, okay, they gotta be on the same side of that transversal. I don't know if you remember, I've said this a few times before, but I used to teach out of a book that didn't call them consecutive interior angles, they called them same side interior angles. I kinda like that a little bit better because look at three and four, or three and five, I'm sorry. Three and five, they're on the same side of the transversal, aren't they? And they're inside the two lines. Four and six are on the same side of the transversal and they're between these two lines. So, but that's not one of our choices. I just thought I'd throw that out there. That's free of charge. All right, let's do some where we actually do some math. All right, well, some of these you do some math. Some of them you just look at them, write down an answer. Would you agree? On a couple of these, you just look at it and say, oh, it's that. All right, on a couple of them, you gotta do a little bit of math. It's not too much. Now, over here, when we did that consecutive interior and all that kind of stuff, I did not say that these two lines are parallel, did I? I mean, it looks like they are, right? But I didn't say they were, all right? On these right here, I got the two lines, but now they are parallel to each other. So that changes a lot of stuff. It doesn't change the name of them, but it changes, okay, what's equal to each other and what's not equal to each other. So if you have two parallel lines cut by transversal, what's true about all the corresponding angles, like one and five, they're corresponding, two and six, three and seven, four and eight, they're all corresponding. What's true about them though, as far as are they equal to each other, do they add up to be something? What, what's true about one and five? What's the relationship between one and five? Come on, some of you guys got hundreds on this, you should know. Trent, help me out. What's the relationship between one and five? If you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, they're corresponding, but that's not the relationship. That's the name of it. But I said earlier, no, not one and five. One and five aren't supplementary. It's an easy word. You're, don't think too hard. Don't think too hard. Think very, very simple. They're what? They're the same thing. They're equal to each other. They're equal, okay? So corresponding angles, listen, shh, corresponding angles are equal to each other. When you have parallel lines cut by transversal, all the corresponding angles are equal. What else is equal to each other? What types of angles? All the... All the what? Come on, talk to me. It's right in front of you. All the what? Say it. All the alternate interior angles are equal to each other. So which ones are alternate interior? Three and six, they're equal to each other. They're the same. So if I know three, I'll know six because they're the same. What else are alternate interior? Four and five. So four and five would equal each other, okay? That doesn't mean three and four are equal to each other. You got it? It's just three and six are equal, four and five are equal. What are some alternate exterior angles? One and? Eight, and they are what to each other? They're also equal to each other, that's right. So one and eight are also equal to each other. And give me another pair of two and seven. Two and seven are alternate exterior, and that means that they are equal to each other as well. There's only one set of these four right here that are not equal to each other. They are what to each other? Somebody said the word earlier. Starts with an S supplementary to each other. What does that mean to be supplementary? It means they add up to be 180, exactly right. So, which ones are consecutive interior angles? We talked about it on those last set of problems, three and five. So they're not equal to each other, three and five. What are they? They add up, don't say they equal 180, they add up to equal 180, or you could say that they're, they're supplementary. That's what, that's what supplementary means, they add up to 180, okay? So three and five add up to 180 and four and six add up to 180. What about one and two? Look at one and two, are they equal to each other? No, they add up to 180, they're supplementary. Okay, so one and two, because they form a straight what? Straight line. 
Okay, what about six and eight? Look at six and eight. What do they do? They add up to 180 because they form a straight line, right? Any two angles that add up to be a straight line, right, that form a straight line, they add up to 180. With me on that? All right. With all that said, let's go back to this. It says angle one is 115 degrees. So I'm going to write 115 right there for angle one. They tell you that, okay? They ask you to solve for angle eight. So angle eight is way down here. Is there a relationship between angle one and angle eight? Are they one of those things that we talked about up here? Yeah. yeah. What are they? Alternate exterior. alternate exterior angles. And what do we say about alternate exterior angles? They are equal to each other. So if angle one is 115, angle eight is also 115. Okay, that's what I meant by some of these. You don't even have to do any math. You just look at it and write down the answer. Everybody see that? So if the angles are equal, then you just write down what it's equal to. We good with that? All right, let's look at this one, four and six. So angle four is 130. So I'm gonna put 130 degrees right there. You gotta find angle six, this one right there. So you look at them and you compare them. What's the relationship between angle four and angle six? They're supplementary, they add up to 180. What's the name of it though? They're consecutive interior angles, right? Consecutive interior angles that add up to 180. So if this is 130, how do I find angle six? How do I find, how do I find it? Not what the answer is, how do I find it? That's right, because if they add up to 180 and I know one of them, I just take that one away from 180 and I get 50 degrees. So angle six is 50 degrees. You see that? All right, so four and six are supplementary. They add up to 180. So if I know one of them, which they told me was 130, I could find the other one by taking it away from 180. We good? Yes, no, maybe? All right, I hope. Is this helping or not? Is it a waste of time or not? No? All right, I hope not. Number five, or number six, sorry, angle five. Angle five is 110, so one, oops, there goes my marker. Let's try it again, 110. So angle five is 110 degrees. They asked you to find angle four. Where's angle four? Way up here. So I look at them. I look at them and I compare them. Are they any of the things that we've talked about today? Angle four and five. What are they? They're alternate interior angles. And what do we say about alternate interior angles? They are equal to each other. That's right. So here's another one where I don't have to do any math at all. I can just look at it and say that this is also 110. What's another way? Even if you didn't know those words, okay, even if you didn't know consecutive interior angle and alternate interior angle and all that kind of stuff, what type of angle is angle four? Is it acute, obtuse, right? What type of angle is angle four? It's obtuse, isn't it? Okay. So that means all the angles that are obtuse in this situation are all what? All the obtuse angles are what to each other? They're the same. They're the same. They're equal to each other. Okay. Every single, every single obtuse angle is equal. So let's just name all the ones that are 110. If angle four is 110, what else is 110 up here? Which one's obtuse up here? One, two, three, or four? Okay, one's obtuse, that's right. So this is 110. You see that? Come down here. This is 110, we just said it was, right? So what else is 110? Eight. Eight. Now let's go a step further. We'll probably have to do this with, um, well, let's just go a step further. So if all the obtuse angles are 110, what are all the acute angles gonna equal? 70, where'd you get 70 from? 180 minus 110, exactly right. Okay, so 180 minus 110 is 70. So that means, watch, every single one of these angles, these acute angles, are gonna be 70 degrees. Oops, it doesn't look like a seven. He's making racist Okay. <laughs> Everybody see this? Yes, he is. <laughs> guys, guys, let's, let's pay attention up here. Everybody look. So if you don't remember the corresponding angles are equal or alternate interior angles are equal or any of that stuff, 
you could just look at it and say all the obtuse angles are equal and all the acute angles are equal to each other. That's really, really helpful. All right, so now let's do number seven. See if that helps. I'm going to erase all this. Look at seven. It says angle seven is 60 degrees. Oops, it's not angle six. Angle seven is 60 degrees. Question says, find angle eight. We talked about this earlier. What's true about seven and eight? What do they do? They form a what? They form a line. So what's true about those two angles? What do they do? They add up to be 180. All right, so if I know one is 60, how do I find, not what's the answer, but how do I find the other one? Go ahead, say it, Leona. That's right, 180 minus 60, and that's going to give you 120 degrees. So angle eight is 120 degrees. Everybody should be able to get these, and you should be able to do them quickly, all right? The 180 minus stuff, especially 60, you should be able to do that in your head. If not, write it down. Do it in a calculator. Okay, I'll let you use calculators in here. All right, but you should just be able to look at it quickly and just look at the relationship between those angles that they give you and say, oh, they're equal. Or what's your other choice? They could be what? Supplementary. And so you just take it away from 180, All right? It's basically your only two choices on four through seven. The one on the retake, right? For most of you, most of you took the retake. I don't know if you remember it, but it was basically the same exact thing. Just different numbers. Okay, this even slanted a different way. I think it slanted this way, but it was basically the same exact thing. All right, it's just the numbers were a little bit different. That's all. We good? All right. What about this one right here? This, this is very, very closely related to what we just finished doing, but you're gonna have to make a little algebra equation out of it. All right, which, Shouldn't be too bad. This one's, this one's really, really easy to do algebraically, okay? Let's take a look. We're looking at this angle right here. We got two parallel lines cut by transversal. We got this angle and we got this angle. What's the relationship? Are they equal? Are they supplementary? What are they? Give me the, Trevor, give me the name of it. They're alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are equal. But what if you don't remember that? What if you don't remember the alternate interior angle thing? Now, you should. We've talked about it enough. But what if you don't remember? What type of angle is this? Is this acute or obtuse? This is an acute angle. What about this angle, 54? What's that? That's acute. So what's true about all the acute angles? They are equal to each other, okay? So these two angles right here, 2x minus 6 and 54, are equal to each other. So... So watch, let's do it right here. So we take the 2x minus 6 and we set it equal to what? 54, because those, this is one angle, this is another angle, they're equal to each other, so we put an equal sign in between. Uh, sure. Now let's do the algebra. This should be pretty easy, all right? Let's take a look, we're solving for x. That's what we wanna do, because that's what the question says to do. That's right, add a six to both sides. All right, we've done this a whole bunch of times in here, haven't we? All right, so this is two X equals what? 60, then we divide both sides by two, and X is 30, okay? And that's it. You don't have to plug it back in or anything like that. They just ask you to solve for X, and you've done it. Now look, don't write 30 degrees. X is not 30 degrees, it's just the number 30, okay? It's not 30 degrees, just write 30. I wouldn't mark off if you um, put 30 degrees, but don't do it, okay? It's not degrees. You could plug it back in here. This should equal 54, shouldn't it? Let's just for fun see if it does. Put the 30 in for this. Two times 30 is 60. 60 minus six is 54, just like it should be, okay? It all checks. Yeah, that is easy, wouldn't you agree? The next one's kind of the same thing. But look at the relationship between, between these two angles. What type of angle is 62? It's a, or an acute angle, right? It's an acute angle, it's less than 90. Look at this 5x plus 8 angle, look at that. It stretches the other way, you see that? So it's more than 90, so what kind of angle is that? It's obtuse. What's true about an acute and obtuse angles? They add up to be 180, exactly right. Or we can do what we did on the first set of problems where we said uh, these are what type of angles? What's the name of the relationship between these angles? They are 
They're not corresponding. No, they're not co corresponding. They're not alternate exterior or interior. They're consecutive interior. What do we say about consecutive interior angles? They are supplementary. They add up to be 180. That's right. So you don't set them equal to each other. I can almost guarantee that if I flip through the people that got this wrong, my guess is anyway, that you probably set these equal to each other. But look at it. Are they equal? No, that's an acute angle. This is obtuse. There's no way that they could be equal to each other. What's my only choice then? If they're not equal, they gotta be what? Supplementary, which means we add them up. We set them equal to 180. So let's do that. Let's add them up. So 5x plus 8 plus, right, because I add them up, 62. If I add those two angles, they equal 180 degrees. And now we just do our math again. Well, we got to do a little bit first here. 8 plus 62, what's that? 70, and that equals 180. And now we have the same exact algebra that we had on the last problem. Minus 70, 5x equals, what's that? 110. Divide both sides by 5. And if you need a calculator, use one. It's fine. What's this? 22. And the question says just to solve for x. So we're done. We just solve for x. It's as easy as that. You just got to know the relationship between your angles. If you don't know that, then you're just guessing on how to set it up. Don't just guess. Know for sure. We good? All right. Is it coming back to you after a whole week off? I mean, it's not like you've been gone a month or anything. It's only been a week. What do you need, Bryce? Why we're going all over this stuff? You can't. Is it that important? If you, if you think you can miss this, then go ahead and go to the bathroom. I don't, I don't understand why you would want to miss this because you haven't even taken the test the first time. I would... I'd be writing down every little thing that I've that I'm doing here. But if you I said if you want to go, you can go. He's not listening to me anyway, so I'm not going to answer him anymore. So watch, let's do I'm going to do the work down here, okay? It says find the distance between these two points. Well, you know you need to know the distance formula. Let me try that again. I'm sure you have. I can't even keep it. I can't even keep a straight face when he says it. All right, so here we go. Let's um, find the distance. This is the distance formula. You got to know it. There's nothing else I can do for you. Okay, if you don't sit there and memorize this formula, I don't know what else I can I can do. I've told you from day one you're gonna have to memorize this thing. So I just wrote out the little shell of the formula. What do we do inside the parentheses right here on the distance formula? We subtract what though? The x's, Sub subtract the x's. So here's my points up here, okay? That's an x, that's a y. That's an x, and that's a y. So we subtract the x's from each other. And it doesn't matter what order you subtract them. I just always like to do the first one minus the second one. So it's six minus two. You see that? Six is the first one, two is the first one. We subtract them. Let's do the y's. So what are we subtracting with the y's? Four minus one. All right, now it's just arithmetic. Now it shouldn't be that hard. Six minus two is four. And what are you doing though to that four? Squaring it. And then you add, subtract these, four minus one is three. And what do you do with that? You square that. So now let's do what's inside the square root first. What's four squared? 16. What's three squared? Nine. All right, let's keep doing what's inside the square root. That's 25. Now, is, do we just leave it like this? No, what do we do? Take the square root of it and say it again. It's five. That's your answer. It's not the square root of five. We just took the square root of that. What does the square root mean? It means what number times itself is equal to the thing that's inside of there. So what number times itself is equal to 25? Five is. Okay, it's not the square root of five, it's just the plain whole number five. That's your answer for number 10. We good with that? I can't remember on the, um, 
on the retake, if it came out to a nice whole number or not, I don't remember. Does anybody remember? I wouldn't blame you if you don't, because I don't remember. But let's do the next one. So look at 10, 11, and 12. You got to know three things, don't you? You got to know the distance formula. Then you have to know what? The midpoint formula. Then you got to know the slope. Okay? So now we got to do midpoint. So I'll just put MP for midpoint. How do we start it off? A midpoint is a point, isn't it? So it's an ordered pair, exactly. It's an ordered pair. So I do this. Now, if it's a midpoint, we're taking half of something, right? So each one of these is being divided by two. Here's the part that people get mixed up on. Because on slope, we subtract. On distance, we subtract, right? But on midpoint, we don't subtract. What do we do? We add. So we add the x's together and we add the y's together. Whatever it takes for you to remember that, write it down a hundred times, I don't know, okay? But you add the points together. So let's come up here and look at our points. Again, this is our x, this is our y. This one is our x and this one is our y. So what do we do on the first one? We add them together. So it's negative two plus what? Negative six. Everybody see that? It's not negative two minus six. Well, actually, it would be the same thing. <laughs> okay, it's negative two plus negative six. Now we do the y's. So let's look at our y's. The y's are the second one. So the five and the negative three, let's add those together. Five plus negative three. And now you just do the math. Negative two plus negative six, what's that? Negative eight? Okay. You guys are scaring me. All right. What's this? Five plus negative three. It's two. And then that's over two. Why did we put it over two? Because that's our formula. We're finding the halfway point. That's what midpoint is, right? Find the halfway. So we have to divide it by two. That's why you did this. We're almost done. What's negative eight divided by two? Negative four. And what's two divided by two? It's one. Keep it in an ordered pair. Just like that, this is the way you should write your answer. Just like that. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, you just got to know the formulas. They're not hard to do at all. I think anybody would agree. They're not difficult to do. The math is not hard. It's just knowing what formula to put it in. All right, the next one, slope. Slope, we use the letter M to represent slope. And it's a fraction. And we do something and we put it on the top and we do something and we put it on the bottom. What is that something we do and to put it on top? Subtract. subtract what though? The y's. Subtract the y's from each other. Okay. Now you're right, John. Just No, you're right. I just didn't say y2 and y1. But subtract the y's from each other. All right. Again, I'm not going to write it. I've written it over here. Let's subtract the y's. It doesn't matter what order you subtract them in. As long as you just subtract the x's in the same exact order, okay? So I, I always go to like the first one minus the second one. I don't know. That's how I do it. So 3 minus 7. What do you think would be a common mistake that people make when they do the slope? Instead of subtracting the y's, what do you think they probably do? They put the x's on top because, you know, we're kind of used to x's going first, right? And whatever's on top, you usually do first. But we don't. Slope is rise over run. Remember, rise is the y-axis, right? Rise is y, run is what? The x-axis. So it's rise over run. So it's the y's over the x's. Now let's take the x's and subtract them in the same order. So if I went the first one minus the second one, Dominic, what would this be? Did you have your hand up? thought you had your hand up. Answer it anyway. What would this be? Subtract the x's. Yeah, so what numbers am I subtracting down here? Yeah, subtract 1 minus 3. It would be, yep. So what's on top? 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Dominic already said it. This is negative 2. Negative over negative is positive. 4 over 2 is 2. That's your answer. Just like that. If you want to put it over 1, I guess you could. You don't need to. But sometimes it will come out to a fraction when you do slopes. In fact, most of the time. But in this one, it doesn't. It comes out to a nice whole number. All right. So there's your um, distance formula, your midpoint formula, and your slope formula. That's pretty important. All right, we're almost there. 
We're getting there anyway, more than halfway done. So find the X and Y intercepts. You remember that, don't you? To find the X intercept, we do something. We set something equal. We set what? Y, y equal to zero. And then in order to find the Y intercept, we set the other letter, which is X. We set that equal to zero. What does that mean? Well, we're taking, uh, if I could get a hold of this, there we go. We're taking this formula right here, this equation. I shouldn't say formula, it's an equation. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make the y equal to 0. So I'm going to put 3x, I don't change that, minus 4 times y. Instead of writing y, what am I going to put here? A 0, that's right. And let's finish up the formula equals 12. What's 4 minus 0? It's just 0. 3x equals 12. Can you do that in your head? Do you have to write that step down? x equals what? Four. It's only half of our answer. Don't circle it. We'll hang on to it for a second. Let's do the y-intercept now. So let's set x equal to zero. Again, we're coming back up over here. Three times zero minus four y equals 12. Everybody see what you did? I just took the x and I made it into a zero because that's how you find the y-intercept. And I just wrote all the other stuff down. Three times zero is zero. So now I got negative 4y. Now this is a little trickier because you got to get rid of a negative, but it's not that much trickier. I'll, I'll do the step on this one. So how do I get rid of that negative 4? I divide it by negative 4, and I divide this side by negative 4. So what's y equal to? 12 divided by negative 4? That's negative 3. But this is not how you should write the answer. Again, you need to find the x and y intercepts, you need to write as a, uh, as a point, okay? So uh, instead, uh, let's just write it right here. Instead of x equals 4, we put a 4 here. Would we set y equal to on this one? A 0. So this is half of our answer right there, 4, 0. How do we write this one? What do we do? We set x equal to 0, and then we set, and we made this negative 3. So these are your answers. You get two answers. This is one intercept. It's the x-intercept. This is the y-intercept. Okay, so you need both of those for number 13. All right. If I'm going too fast, go back and watch the lesson. Okay, they're all on YouTube. You all know that. I shouldn't have to tell you that. All right. Write the slope-intercept form. What in the world is slope-intercept form? Y equals mx plus b. Even off a week, you remember that, don't you? Y equals mx plus b. All right. So it says write the slope-intercept form of this right there. So let's write this plus y equals 1. So how do I turn this into this? Well, all I got to do is try to get y by itself. Well, y is almost by itself already, isn't it? Okay, all I got to do is get rid of what? That 3x. How do I get rid of that 3x? I subtract a 3x. Okay, everybody see that? Well, if I do it to the left side, talk to me. Got to do it to the right side as well, don't I? All right. If you want, now you can't do this on your paper, but I'll do it here. Watch. I just slide this one over. Why did I do that? Because y equals mx plus b. I want that mx to go first. Okay. And then the b, which is just a number, I want that to go on the end. So I just slid that over. And now I got to subtract a 3x from both sides. Now, this was a positive 1, wasn't it? So I'd make sure I put a plus 1. That is your answer. That's a slope-intercept form of this equation right here. All I did was subtract the 3x, stuck it over here. Now, some people may have written it like this. Is this the same as this? Sure. Watch, is negative, I'm just throwing out a number, is negative 5 plus 2 the same as 2 minus 5? It's the same exact thing, isn't it? So is this and this the same thing? Yeah, why would I not want you to write your answer like this, though, even though they are the same exact thing? Good. It's not in the format, that's right. This is your form right here. Okay, I want it written y equals mx plus b. So the mx right here, that needs to go before that number that's over here on the end. 
That's why I put it in, inside there. That's why I didn't just go one minus three X. Everybody see that? All right, so that's pretty important. Okay, enough of that. Let's do one more. This one's the same kind of problem. It's just like 14, except it's a little, the math is a little bit more involved. All right, but it's the same style. So it's 11X minus 8Y equals negative 48. This is a little uglier. That first one was nice and easy. All I do is just minus a 3X, big deal, okay? This one's a little bit tougher. Again, I want to get Y by itself. So what's the first thing I'm going to get rid of here? Just like we did before. Get rid of the X. Get rid of that 11X. How do I get rid of the 11X? I subtract an 11X and I subtract an 11X. But how do I want to write it, though? I don't want to write it negative 48 minus 11X. I'm just going to switch positions. I'm going to put that minus 11X first, and then I'll put that minus 48 last. Why did I do that? Because I want the MX to go before that regular number. Everybody see that? Yes? No? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Take this and slide it up here because I was running out of room. Um, boom. There we go. Okay. One more step. All right, we didn't have to do this step on, the, on uh, number 14, but now we got to do one more step because Y is not by itself now. You got this negative 8. That negative 8 is being multiplied. How do you get rid of something that's being multiplied? You divide. If you divide the left side, you got to divide the right side, everything on the right side, everything. So you got to divide this by a negative 8, and you have to divide this by a negative 8. I saw in some papers, some people were only dividing the 48 by the 8. You got to divide everything by it. Negative over negative is what? It's about the third time today we said that. It's positive. And so watch how I'm going to write this. I'm just going to write it 11 over 8 X. I don't have to change it. I don't have to make it a decimal. I don't have to make it a mixed number. Just keep it 11 over 8. And then what's this going to be? Negative over negative is plus. What's 48 divided by 8? 6, right? And that's your answer right there. That's how you write your answer. Okay, enough of that. Running out of time, so I got to go a little quick. Boom. Uh, let's do this super fast. Y equals three. So watch. I'm gonna. Oops, didn't want that. I want this. There we go. Do this. Do this. Y equals three. So what do I do? I go on the y-axis to three. Which one's the y-axis? It's the up and down one, okay, the vertical one, right? So three, one, two, three, put a dot. Do I just put a dot and I'm done? No, what do I have to do? I gotta draw a line through it, that's right. And it's what kind of a line? It's a horizontal line, okay? And let me get, there we go, there we go. That's it, that's y equals three. I'm gonna skip 17 because we're running out of time. But what would you do? You'd put a dot at negative 4 on the x-axis, and what kind of line is it going to be? It's going to be a vertical line. Okay. I don't, again, I don't know what else to tell you. Some people are still missing this. this. These two are so super easy. You should be able to do it in like 10 seconds. You should be able to do this, no lie. What about this one? This is just about as easy. So here it is. Y equals MX plus B. This is the Y intercept. So down here at negative one on the Y axis, I put a dot. How do I find the other dot? I look at this number right here, the slope. Yeah, Jason, tell me. Go up three. So one, two, three. I don't put a dot yet. I do what? I got to run. How far do I run? One, right there. Okay, and then I connect them. And then I'm done. Put arrows on them. So that is this one right here, yes. Yeah, you always put it as a one. Yep. Yeah. If it's just a whole number. Yep. Yeah. Like number 20 is just as easy. Watch this. Susan, a different color. I know the bell's about to ring, but just watch. Look at this one. I'll do this on the same graph. This one, the y intercept is two. So I put a dot at two on the y axis. 
And what's my slope? My slope is two over three. It's rise over run. So I rise two and I run three. So I put a dot at positive two, run two, or rise two, run three, and it's as easy as that. Okay? I'm going to do number 19. If you're walking out the door, that's fine. I'm just going to do it for the video if you want to watch it on here. What I would do here, I notice that everything can be divided by 3. So watch this. I'm going to divide everything by 3. So I get a 2x plus y equals 4. I go y equals negative 2x plus 4. And then I graph the thing. Y-intercept is 4. The slope, so it would be right here. The slope is negative 2 over 1. Boom, right here. And that's your line right there. That's it. Pretty simple. All right. Enough of that. She is not.